Hello everyone. Welcome to part two of the microbial manufacturing example. The first case in this video, case B1, represents two similar products called product A and product B. These are made within a multi-product plant. Rather than creating the product B recipe from scratch, the recipe for product B was generated by selecting the recipes node in the explorer tree, selecting the product A recipe in the pane on the right, copying and pasting the recipe, and editing the recipe to reduce the durations of the fermentation operations, reduce the centrifugation time, change the freeze-dry procedure to a bulk fill procedure, etc. This method of copying and pasting followed by editing of the new recipe is the recommended method for generation of recipes that are similar to one another. Next, a production plan with six batches of product A and six batches of product B was created. Furthermore, a 24-hour changeover was scheduled at the end of the product A campaign to account for cleaning and other activities between the campaigns of different products. The resulting EOC for the two recipes is shown here. Notice that all batches of the product A1 campaign are green, and all batches of the product B1 campaign are orange. This is a change from the previous EOC, which showed each individual batch with a different color. Modifications to the EOC color scheme can be made by right-clicking an open area of the chart and choosing Edit Style. Here, you can specify that the chart color scheme should be based on batches, recipes, or campaigns. Note that there are also tabs which allow you to change the bar style and the time scale at the bottom of the chart. It is also possible to change the time scale to calendar-based rather than a relative basis starting at day one. In addition to the green and orange bars, Notice that there are white bars immediately following the Product A campaign. These represent the 24-hour changeover for each equipment item following the Product A campaign. Finally, notice that the Product A1 campaign uses the freeze dryer, LYO1, for its final procedure, whereas the Product B1 campaign uses the bulk filler, FL1. All other equipment is used by both processes. Therefore, the campaign of product B cannot begin until the campaign of product A is complete. In order to increase production within this plant, each recipe could be run on its own dedicated production line. This next example, case B2, shows how to accomplish this. First, a duplicate set of equipment should be added for product B. This requires the addition of two new seed fermenters, SFR3 and SFR4, two new production fermenters, FR3 and FR4, etc. Next, the new equipment items were assigned to the Product B recipe by selecting the relevant procedures in the Product B recipe and updating the equipment specifications for their main equipment pools. For instance, the main equipment pool for the fermentation procedure of the Product B recipe was updated to contain fermenters FR3 and FR4 rather than fermenters FR1 and FR2. Other procedures in the Product B recipe were updated in a similar manner. Although products A and B generally use different equipment units in this example, some equipment units were shared between the two recipes. These include the centrifuge and the CIP skids. Furthermore, since both recipes use the same centrifuge and CIP skids, the main equipment pool in the centrifuge procedure and the auxiliary equipment specifications related to CIP operations were not changed in either recipe. The resulting EOC is shown here. Note that in some cases, both campaigns require use of the same equipment item simultaneously. This is why there is a gap prior to the pump-to-centrifuge operation in tank TK5 here. 
The third batch of the Product A campaign requires the use of centrifuge CF1 at the same time. Therefore, the material in tank TK5 cannot be pumped to CF1 until the centrifugation associated with batch 3 of the Product A campaign is complete. The determination of which campaign gets to use the equipment item or other resource first is based upon the prioritization of the campaigns within the production schedule. Additional information on prioritization of campaigns is available in case B2 of the README file associated with this example. This next set of cases incorporate buffer preparation and holding activities into the production schedule. It is assumed that each product requires eight different buffer solutions, five buffers for the operations in the ion exchange chromatography procedure, and three buffers for the operations in the hydrophobic interaction chromatography procedure. For the sake of simplicity, the product B recipe shown in the previous example has been removed from these cases. In case C1, the prepared buffers are each used within a single batch. As a result, a new buffer prep section has been added to the product A recipe. Within this section, each of the buffers is prepared in a blending tank and then transferred to a holding tank. Note that since the buffer prep and storage activities will take place in different equipment from the main processing operations, an additional facility called buffer prep area has been added, and the preparation and holding tanks have been added to it. Although there are eight different buffer prep procedures, only two buffer prep tanks are used in this case, TP1 and TP2. In other words, each prep tank is used for multiple buffer prep procedures, and therefore these tanks are reused multiple times over the course of a single batch. The prep tank assignments can be seen by visiting the Main Equipment Pool tab associated with each buffer prep procedure. Here you can see that the buffer prep tanks TP1 and TP2 are both listed as tanks that could potentially be used for this procedure. Both tanks are also listed as the main equipment pool for the other buffer prep procedures. This allows Schedule Pro to choose whichever prep tank is available at a given time in order to prepare a buffer as long as that tank meets the process capacity requirements. Note that the prep tanks can be of different sizes and Schedule Pro can account for these differences when determining which prep tank to use for a given procedure. Please see case C1 of the README file associated with this example for more details on this concept. The EOC associated with case C1 is shown here. The reason that only two buffer prep tanks are used is that the buffer preparation activities are relatively quick so reusing these tanks does not create scheduling bottlenecks. Unlike the buffer prep procedures, each of the buffer holding procedures has its own dedicated holding tank, THA1, THA2, etc. Furthermore, notice that the buffer hold tanks are typically idle for extended time periods between their receive buffer operations and their use buffer operations. This can be seen clearly in a zoomed-in view of the EOC. Here, it is easier to see one of the receive buffer operations, the idle time shown in white, and the use buffer operation. The reason there is extended idle time between the preparation and use of the buffers is that it is prudent to prepare the buffers well in advance of their planned usage in the process. This ensures that buffer availability does not become a production bottleneck, even if a specific preparation activity takes longer than expected or all buffer prep tanks are already occupied at the scheduled buffer prep procedure's start time. To specify within Schedule Pro that these buffers may be prepared well in advance of their use in the main process, the first operation in each buffer prep procedure was given a negative fixed time shift 
as well as a flexible shift. For instance, the scheduling specifications for the PREP buffer operation in the ion exchange equilibration PREP procedure are shown here. Notice that this operation has been given a fixed time shift of negative 24 hours relative to the start of the column operations reference operation in the ion exchange procedure of the downstream section of product A. Furthermore, a 16-hour flexible shift has also been applied. This set of fixed time shift and flexible shift specifications will cause Schedule Pro to attempt to initiate this prep buffer operation 24 hours prior to the expected use of the buffer. However, if there is a facility or equipment conflict that will not allow the buffer prep operation to start 24 hours in advance, its start time can be delayed by up to 16 hours. In other words, the operation will be scheduled as early as possible within the time window of 8 to 24 hours prior to use. Note that for the sake of simplicity, the different chromatography operations typically required within a chromatography procedure, such as equilibration, loading, washing, elution, etc., were all combined into a single long operation called column operations within these recipes. As a result, all buffers for a given chromatography procedure appear to be fed into the column at the same time. In an actual production facility, the different buffers would be fed sequentially into the chromatography column. To learn more about how to set up the timing between different buffer preparation procedures, please see case C1 in the README file for this example. This next case, C2, also uses buffer preparation and holding, but it represents a scenario where a single batch of ion exchange regeneration buffer is used for multiple production batches. The other buffers associated with product A are all still prepared for single batch use. To model the preparation of a single batch of buffer that will be used in multiple production batches, a new INX Regen Prep recipe was created. This recipe is the same as the INX Reg Prep procedure, which was included within the Product A recipe of the previous case. However, moving this procedure into its own recipe allows us to run fewer INX Regen Prep batches than Product A batches. In addition, it allows us to use the same batch of INX Regen Buffer for many different production recipes if desired. There are several ways to specify when the INX Regen Prep recipe should be run. The simplest way is to schedule individual campaigns of the INX Regen Prep recipe whenever additional buffer is expected to be needed by the production campaigns. For instance, if one buffer prep recipe can feed two batches of the production recipe, a single buffer prep batch could be scheduled prior to every two production batches within the campaign sequence area of the production schedule. Another option is to link production and consumption of a material such as a buffer by using a storage unit. This can allow additional batches of buffer to be scheduled automatically whenever more buffer is required by the main process. This second method is the one that is used within case C2, and it will be described now. In order to store the buffer generated from the INX Regen Prep recipe, several additional resources had to be created. First, a new material called INX Regen Buffer was created within the Materials section of the project. Next, a storage unit was created within the buffer prep area facility. The unit was set up as bulk volumetric storage of intermediates, and the new INX regen buffer material was associated with this unit. Next, the storage unit was set up to track the inventory within the unit. Furthermore, 
The unit was associated with holding tanks THA-1 and THA-2. In other words, multiple vessels are being used to serve a single storage unit in this case. Furthermore, these tanks were given capacities of 5,500 liters each. This was specified through the Buffer Prep Area Facilities Equipment List. As a result, the total storage capacity for this buffer is 11,000 liters. Finally, it was necessary to edit the recipes in order to ensure the appropriate amount of material would be produced or consumed by each batch. To specify an appropriate quantity of buffer generation per batch of the INX Regen Prep recipe, the transfer to hold operation within this recipe was edited. First, a new material output stream named INX Reg Buffer to STG was added to the Material Outputs tab of this operation. Then, the specifications for this stream were set by selecting the stream and clicking the Edit button. Here, the composition and amount of the material can be specified, and the storage unit can be assigned. In this case, 5,000 liters of INX Regen Buffer will be produced and stored in the INX Regen Storage Unit. Next, the operation titled Column Operations within the INX procedure of the Product A recipe was edited in order to ensure that 2,400 liters of INX Regen Buffer would be consumed during each batch of Product A. The specification of INX Regen Buffer Material Consumption was made on the Material Inputs tab of this operation. The details of the consumption can be viewed by selecting the stream and clicking the Edit button. Here, the composition and amount of the input material can be specified, and the storage unit can be assigned. Once the preceding specifications have been completed, the recipes may be scheduled in the production schedule. As before, six batches of product A will be scheduled. However, Unlike Case C1, Case C2 includes a campaign of INX Regen Prep batches. Furthermore, the start time of these batches is event-based rather than being based on a specific time or batch sequence. In other words, each batch is begun, when necessary, based upon the buffer inventory level. This is specified on the Time Sequencing tab of the INX Regen Prep campaign. Clicking the Event button on this tab allows us to set or view the criteria for initialization of the INX Regen Prep batches. In this case, a new batch will be initiated whenever the total amount of INX Regen buffer material in inventory drops to 201 liters or less. In order to ensure that sufficient INX Regen prep batches are scheduled to meet all processing demands, a sufficient maximum number of batches should also be specified in the Amount section of the ID Amount tab of the INX Regen prep campaign. In this case, three batches will be sufficient to meet all scheduled demands from the Product A campaign. Once the campaign specifications are complete and the campaigns are scheduled, the EOC can be viewed and analyzed. Notice that the first INX Regen prep batch starts at the beginning of the second day. This is because the release date for the INX Regen prep campaign was specified to be one day later than the release date for the Product A campaign. This was specified on their respective time sequencing tabs during campaign setup. As a result, this buffer prep campaign can begin no earlier than 24 hours after the start of the Product A campaign. Furthermore, since the initial inventory in the INX Regen storage unit is zero, the event-based campaign initialization specified a few minutes ago forces the first batch of this campaign to begin as early as possible, 
while still respecting the release date constraint. As a result, the campaign starts at the very beginning of day two. Notice, however, that the three buffer prep batches are not evenly spaced. Instead, the second and third batches of this campaign do not begin until the buffer level has fallen below its 201 liter threshold. This can be seen more easily by clicking the Open Inventory Chart button on the toolbar of the EOC, selecting Storage Inventory, selecting the INX Regen Storage Unit, and clicking the Plot button. Note that this chart can be linked to the EOC by clicking the Link button. The Storage Inventory Chart clearly shows that a new 5,000 liter batch of buffer is prepared each time the volume in the storage unit approaches zero. Each batch of buffer is then used to supply two batches of product A, resulting in the two drops in inventory prior to the subsequent batch of buffer prep. Also note that the contents of this EOC have been modified so that only certain equipment items are visible. This was done by right-clicking an open area of the EOC and choosing Edit Contents slash Ordering. Another way to view the INX Regen Buffer Inventory is to click the Open Inventory Chart button on the toolbar of the EOC, select Holding Equipment Inventory rather than Storage Inventory, choose one of the holding tanks, THA1 or THA2, and click the Plot button. This produces a plot of the inventory level within that particular tank. I will follow the same process for the other holding tank. Here you can see the inventory levels within the individual holding tanks linked with the EOC. Notice that tank THA1 is used to hold batches 1 and 3 of the buffer, while tank THA2 is used to hold batch 2 of the buffer. For additional details on storage unit specifications, please refer to case C2 in the README file associated with this example. This next case describes the use of disposable bags, rather than fixed tanks, for storage of materials. This case is similar to case C1, which was described previously. However, in this case, the buffers are prepared and then stored in mobile disposable bag units until necessary. This modification was made by editing the properties of various buffer holding units in the buffer prep area facility. For instance, the specifications for holding unit TA-INX-EQ hold were modified to include a 4.5 square meter floor space requirement on the size tab. This space requirement includes the space for the bag itself, the storage skid, plus any additional space around the unit required for material handling, connections, etc. Similar modifications were made to other holding tanks, although different floor space requirements were assigned to various units. After entering the new mobile equipment specifications, the total floor space required by these units during the course of a campaign may be tracked by choosing View, Resource Profiles, Mobile Equipment Area. This chart can also be generated directly from the EOC by clicking the Equipment Occupancy Chart button and selecting Mobile Equipment Area. Here you can see the Mobile Equipment Chart linked to the EOC for a six-batch campaign of Product A and a six-batch campaign of Product B. The EOC in this case shows the utilization of the production bioreactors, as well as the utilization of the buffer hold tanks. The mobile equipment area chart shows the total amount of open floor space that will be required within a staging area of the facility in order to support the main process. This concludes part two of this tutorial example. Please join me for part three of this example, where I will explain how to use material supply systems to track material resources, and where I will discuss how to use changeover matrices 
to automatically add cleaning steps when equipment sits idle for long periods of time.